and Pascal from Orange Pixel. And before we start this week's video, a little update on uh, something I mentioned last week. It was about my wife and she had a weird casting call. If you haven't seen the video, go check that video. It was pretty good. Quick summary, casting call out of the blue. She's not an actress, she's not a model. She's a store owner with social media accounts that haven't been updated for a while. So it was out of the blue, very weird, very strange about a flavor for a new beverage. And it was just very weird. Some back and forth mailing and calling and it all seemed on the up and up and also the money was kind of good so she decided to go and i wasn't really sure what was going to happen luckily the update is she's fine she came back home i can't really say much about it just yet but it was pretty cool so i am going to do a follow-up on this in one of the future videos maybe in a few weeks i think so stick with the channel if you want to hear more about this weird adventure so thanks for uh, people asking about it and just being concerned and all that stuff this was the update, which brings me to today's video topic. Um, the passing of a good friend. That turned dark very quickly. And let's just quickly remedy that. The, the passing of a good, I mean, this friend right, right over here, the I Arcade um, is no more actually, uh, which came out of the blue also to me. Um, it's an interesting device, an interesting story to tell and also a good um, subject for a video. Should you as a game developer spend time or waste time on building games for niche markets like this one? Cool topic. After the intro. arcade um, is no more I guess that's pretty much the conclusion of uh, last week when the arcade mailed out a email to developers and also did a live video for their users saying that they are folding the company uh, couldn't get enough investment all that stuff weird thing here is a little side note that I, as a developer I the first thing or the first moment I heard about it was a user tweeting me and then I had to check my email to find out and usually as a developer for a device you kind of get to hear these things but I also get that they keep stuff like that a mystery up to the latest possible point so I understand it's it's just a sad thing for everybody that enjoyed the iArcade and loved it the iArcade was a Kickstarter project that pretty much went bananas bananas and it blew up, it got all the funding they needed. It was, I think, in 2020, so it's not even that old. A lot of these got made, and I got one as a game developer and released most of my games on it. It's pretty much an Android box, so my Android versions or the Android versions of my games are running on this. It's, to be honest, not powerful. It's 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 fairly weak device. I think they could have gone with a better processor and stuff like that. The screen is somewhat narrow, but it's an arcade cabinet. And if you've been a gamer since like the 80s, 90s, growing up with stuff like this, this is your dream device, or it's close to a dream device. But of course, that's also their problem. It's a very niche market. Um, I think we're talking about 30, 40, 50 year olds or older with extra income to waste on devices like this. I think it was $700 and that's the bar top version. If you wanted more to have a standing cabinet, it was even more expensive. And then of course you still have to buy the games. Um, it wasn't cheap, it was pretty cool. So there's that.
very cool to just play my games on this but the market was just very niche and right now um, they didn't have enough funding to keep it going and I can imagine that's that's crap for everybody that was involved in it and everybody that was really feeling this and working for it and of course the gamers are also they now have this big big device that is not gonna get much um, extra love and attention on new games. I'm sure there will be some homebrew hacks and modification here and there that you can maybe install a uh, MAME or something like that and then play a lot of classic games. But new releases, things like that won't happen. So the question for this video at least, should you be supporting devices like this and put your valuable time developing games into creating the games for devices like this or making them run on devices like this and this isn't the first one of course there is android little console again android so android has been pretty interesting for devices like this um, of course also a kickstarter wanted to do a lot did a lot not enough uh, ended up being a memory and there have been more. I mean, I have a bunch of little gadgets and devices and there's just a lot of these things and I try to always get my games running on them for two reasons, to be honest. Um, reason one is it's cool to have my games everywhere. It's usually uh, less work to just update your game, especially if they are Android versions. Update the Android version and release it on new gadget. Um, but the main reason is to I get these devices, including this one. Uh, that probably didn't help the bottom line for IRK, but I got this one in the mail from them. Thanks guys, I'm very generous, very amazing, cool, awesome. And I also gave all my effort to get all my games up and running on there. So it wasn't for nothing, but that's pretty much the two reasons I actually do it. Now, of course, that's very cool, having your games on a device and having the device. But if you're running a business, um, it's all about the money. So that's kind of an important question. Was it worth it money-wise? Let me just be open on it for the IRK. So of course I keep track of all my revenue and income streams and all those things and just looking at my spreadsheet of stuff like spreadsheet full of things. The IRK, I had my games on there in 2021. So that's 21, 22 and now six months into this year, 23. In total, uh, money made $7,000. You can think about that if it's worth it, yes or no. It depends on your situation. For some people, that will be a lot of money over three years. For some people, it won't be a lot. But the work involved, I think I spent maybe a week getting all my games up and running on it. Uh, most of the problems was with the first game. Once you figure that one out, it's usually a lot easier to get the other games on there. So if you look at it like that, seven days, $7,000, I think it has been worth it for me. And um, it's kind of sad to see the IRK gone. Of course, revenue was already taking a dive. It's, it's such a small niche market. There are maybe like a thousand units, less probably. I actually have that data on IRK somewhere, but I'm not sure it's confidential. But then again, the company is gone. All right, there's more than a thousand units. Um, there are, they only been selling the device in the US and Canada. So that also means the market for the device or the games or the app store type thing on the device was only available in the US and Canada. I couldn't really exit it for my device. So I never could try other games, only my own games. Um, and of course, a lot of Kickstarter backers and other people bought it and imported it to other countries. But in total, there have almost been 7,000 units out there. Almost, not exactly, but almost. Which is, I mean, pretty cool. There was 351 games on it. And I think 10, 11, 12 of those were mine, which isn't bad. So um, yeah, interesting stats of a company that is no longer. You will be missed, iArcade. Bye, I okay. It was fun knowing you, man. So when it comes to a different type of console right now, the Atari VCS is another niche market that I'm very active on, releasing games on there. 
as many as possible and as quickly as possible for this exact same reason as the Arcade showed. I don't know how long this niche market will be around. I think Atari is doing a lot better than IRK though. They have more stuff going on and I think they have a little bit more knowledge of what they're doing and trying. So also I think they have better financing than the IRK has. So for now it's doing very, very well. Um, looking at the numbers of the Atari, I think we did almost the same as I did on the iArcade except for the Atari we did it in six months maybe I think so a much shorter time period we did about the same numbers as the iArcade so uh, the only downside on this is that it was a Linux box so it had to we had to modify some stuff and I'm saying we 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 because Sirius Lie, my partner in crime for the consoles handled most of the stuff for the Atari which also means that I had to uh, split the money, which is fine because it does the work for it. So um, if you can get your games on a niche console, Atari or something else popping up, because there will be other devices popping up pretty soon. And it's a very interesting market, especially for indie game developers. Right, um, hang on, I gotta move some stuff out of the... My desk is way too small for... Right, um, where was I? Especially for indie game developers. Look, big companies will be contacted, their games are awesome and everybody wants those games on their devices. And bigger indie game developer, indie game studios with hit games will be contacted the first. But they always need games. Especially, they need to attract players and you can only attract players if you have a lot of games. If you only have four games and they are hit games, that's great but the gamers will be moving on pretty quickly or won't buy a $700 device for just four games. They can probably also play on other devices. So you need a lot of games. And that's pretty much uh, where we as small game developers can really get a little a foot in the door. We got games, we can provide you with games. We don't need a lot. Let us on your device and let us make a little bit of money on it. And usually we are also much faster, much quicker getting these games up and running because we're more enthusiastic about it. For us, it's more, more valuable than for a bigger company wasting their resources on it. And especially if it's a device that's running Android or Windows, Linux, and you already have your games available on those platforms or for those operating systems, it's usually not a lot of work to get your game up and running on a new device. And those people from the device are often very willing to help you out with stuff and sort things out and, and get you up and running as quick as possible because again they need games and your game is just as good as another to fill up their catalog and interest and keep it interesting for players so um conclusion niche markets you don't believe in something i did believe in the ouya by the way but even if you don't believe in something's going to be big it doesn't matter small markets niche markets are still pretty interesting and that's it for this week's video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, do you enjoy niche markets? Do you like niche markets? Would you release your games on a niche market? Have you been releasing them on the niche markets? Have, are you a gamer using the iArcade or using the Atari? Let me know. Or using a completely different platform I don't know about yet because I want my games on it. Let me know about that one because I'm running out of niche markets right now, which isn't a good thing because it's always extra revenue and with everyone and with every niche market falling down, I lose a little bit of my revenue stream. So I'm in desperate need for new niche markets. All right, see you next week, bye. There's something in my eye. This is, I, not that I can see you anyway, but I'm gonna do this again. Blooper, we'll put this in at a blooper.